All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kakodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples for his younger brothers, and peace and blessings, salutations, and hopeful they got the pushing and word and truth, and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, pushing to get up out of here, Shalom unto the hopeful they the believers, the listeners. Who may have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh by Shem Al Shai. What I'm gonna get into this morning, you know, is that, you know, we're beginning, you know, to understand righteousness. You know, like it's making sense. <laughs> you see, and the Lord put us in this captivity, all right, for us to learn. You know, He put us in this captivity for us to get it. You see, this captivity is now beginning to benefit us, all right, in the way we think towards righteousness, man, okay? This this captivity and this current wicked society, all right, has created appreciation for the righteous way of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know? Because before then, all right, you know, we had a curiosity and wickedness. We had, you know, we was ruled, you know, by the flesh, you know? And we still battle in the flesh, but now, you know, we understand the why, you know, and his word and through the Holy Spirit is making us tame the flesh, making us tame worldly desires, man. You know, and now we see the way. OK, and that's why Yahweh Shah is known as the light, <laughs> you know, because now we see the way. Matter of fact, <clears throat> let's get a few precepts. I think this is. um. St. John 8 and 12. All right, this is the book of St. John, chapter 8, verses 12. Then spake Yahweh Shai again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed to me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Okay? So how do we follow Yahweh Shai through this word? Now, he's the light of the world. He's the light on how to be. You see, on how to exist. Now we have the light of life. Now we understand the basics of living. Okay, everybody in this society, you know, so so popular and so trending and knows everything and so wise in their own conceit and got it figured out and self-made and look at me, but they don't know the basics of living. We didn't know the basics of living before this truth, man. Now we understand the basics of of life and it's through righteousness man it's through order and now we're we're getting these things man but we had to be chastised in this captivity to fully understand these things man okay we're gonna get that okay now this is the book of psalms chapter 119 All right, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. <clears throat> oh, it's a lucky. It said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. And therefore, I hate every false way. Okay, you see that? So as we get more understanding through these precepts, and we begin to look at the ways of this society and how much dysfunction, how much chaos, you know, it has created, you know, we begin to hate, okay, the, the false way because a lot of our people are caught up in the false way you know look at the mindset of a christian that's a false way look at the mindset uh, of black culture you know and the cultures within black culture street culture and, you know thought culture that's a false way the alphabet movement that's a false way. okay all those things are false ways that we begin to hate you know more and more as we come into understanding of righteousness, man. Verse 5, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And what is a lamp? Okay, a light. And a light unto my path, which is Yahweh Shai. Okay? And the path goes into what? Your manner of life. Okay? So th this word has lit up, has lit up, illuminated, and how to live and how to be. Things should make sense now. You should see, like I said, you should see 
why you should stone a lazy nigga, man. You should see why you should get rid of a uh, adulterer. All right, so um, an adulterer and adulteress, man. You see why you should uh, uh, get rid of someone pushing false doctrine, man. Okay, you see, we should see why the Lord had arranged marriages, man. Especially arranged marriages, cause I, you know, in you know, I used to think too, like, damn, you know, it's. That's messed up, man. The arranged marriages, man. They don't have the people getting married. Don't have a lot of say. So you know, man. Damn, you know, we were westernized thinking. Damn, the woman just, you know, she, she, you know, you, we thought that was oppressive to a woman, but now we see now nah, a woman liberated to make her own choices is oppressive to herself. Okay, she puts herself in misery, man, through her decision making. Like now. We see why it was arranged marriages. Like now, these things are making more and more sense, man. <laughs> you see the time passing. Reading on Psalms 119 and 105 again. It said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Okay? So, like I said, now we've been illuminated in righteousness on how to live. Okay, let's go from there. Uh, And the Lord allowed it to get this bad, you know, so the so the elect could get it. <laughs> you see? The elect would cry out, you know? I'm gonna say the elect would cry and sigh for the abomination down in the midst thereof. Okay? Let's do the Roman 32 and 15 with Jeshurun, alright? Which is Israel. Wax fat and kick. Thou art wax fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the Most High which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Okay? So in our sovereignty, you know, we got proud. Okay? And we, we became curious in wickedness, man. You know? We, we were seduced by the way of the heathen, which, you know, was the way of the flesh. Because we had laws that made us civil. They made us noble. They gave us order. They produced life. They produced peace. You see? But we, you know, well, was curious about the way of the heathen. And the Lord allowed us to go that way. Okay? When you go here, it said they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations. Provoked they him to anger. They sanctified unto devils not to the most high to gods whom they knew not to new gods they came newly up whom your father feared not of the rock that begotten thee thou art unmindful and has forgotten the power that formed thee and when the lord saw it he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters and he said i will hide my face from them i will see what their end shall be, for they are very fraud generation where uh children in whom is no faith. Okay? And you read in the NLT, he said, I will this is on Deuteronomy 32 and 20. He said, I will abandon them and see what becomes of them. And this is what we had. You know? When we was when when, when, when the Lord allowed this devil to separate us. From our power, okay, and gave us a false way. We see what it has produced, man. <laughs> to now, as like I say, we 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 thirst for righteousness, man. We get it, okay. We we fully get it, you know. And these things should be making more and more sense, man. As, as the days go by, and we look out to the earth, and then we look into what how it's supposed to be, you know. It should make complete sense this, this this society it like the scriptures say i'm gonna get it and finish this he said i will abandon them then see what becomes of them for they are a twisted generation children without integrity man okay and that's what we were <laughs> and this is what we become all right and esau has magnified it through his enchantments man 
Okay? Would you go here to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter? What does it say? It said... Yeah, this first Corinthians one and um nineteen it says where it said for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this world? Have not the most high made foolish the wisdom of this world? Okay? So the so called wisdom of this world the so-called way to be, the so-called modern and progressive way of living, you know? Because, see, the, the Esau pushes as if he's got to figure it out. And he has a better alternative lifestyle of living outside of the scriptures, man. But now, as we look into it, look how foolish this looks, man. Okay? Two women, okay, telling you, two, two, you know, two, two studs together. Telling you they don't need no man, but then they go artificially, you know, inseminated, okay, but by man's sperm. Still is pregnant. You see? This man is trying to take the woman out of you, uh, you know, the ovaries out of, out of a woman and put it to a man. How foolish is this society, man, when everything already functions in the proper way and it's convenient. See, one thing about wickedness is not got so far that it's extremely inconvenient to be wicked, man. Those men that are getting those surgeries, okay, trying to turn the, 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 their male part to a woman part, you know, it's just cringing even, even thinking about it, man. Okay, but look at the complications and, and the torment they're going through, man. That's foolish, man. It's super stupid. Okay, well Esau presents it as the better way, as the alternative way, as love. You he pre, he presents you mutilating yourself as love. Okay? The woman being promiscuous and you know, chasing Dante. <laughs> you see? Dante should be a, a great example, man, of how foolish this is, man. Okay? You got an able-bodied man that's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's a high earner willing to fully take care of you, but you would rather chase out the man that's incarcerated, faithful to prison, nigga. Like, that's a lot of you like that. Like, they, they have this undying, you know, loyalty to prison niggas, man. They don't make sense. You're concerned about their well-being inside of a prison, which their decision-making got them there. Okay? Then your well-being in the free world, man. Super stupid. But that's the wisdom of this world becoming foolish. Okay? So let's go from there. Let's get on... It's the book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 15. It says, wisdom, um, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him. Because true love comes from the scriptures, man. Because as a man, you love your daughter, you're going to put her with the best fit. Okay? You're going to put her with the best suitor, the best man. All right, there's going to be a, that serves the Lord. That's a provider. All right, and has a, 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 a reputation, you know, a, a, comes from a reputable family. Okay, going back to the book of Tobit. Tobit's family and his cousin family, um, the father of Sarah, they was replicable men. There was two families that had good reputations, man, that joined together. Okay? Now these things should make sense. That's love. <laughs> you see? A, a lazy nigga that won't do right, you put him to death, that's love for the nation, man, because now you prevent this nigga from becoming a burden on everyone else, man. You see? 
The law is rooted in love. No matter how harsh, all right, the, the consequence is rooted in love, man. Okay? <laughs> we we was taught uh, off way, man. And that's why it even says, what's that in um First John 5 and 3 said, For this is the love of the Most High that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous, man. And these things are not grievous. And that's one thing in church they used to always say, man, I'm so glad we're not under the law. I'm so glad we free from the law. Okay? The law is not grievous, man. Okay? The law is pretty much based in love for the nation, man. Love for your fellow neighbor. True love, man. Okay? <laughs> let's go from there. Let's get that in the uh, book of Psalm 119 again. It's the book of Psalm, chapter 119, and I think there's 71, yep. This is Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Okay? So it was good for us to be afflicted and chastised in this captivity and Lord allow, you know, this society just to be ran in pure wickedness, ran in pure opposition, you know, of the scriptures so we can fully get it, so we can see it. And that's why our Lord be, is letting us marinate in these situations, man, in these circumstances, man. Okay? Because we're operating in a very defiled state. <laughs> you know, this is... A, this is a, extreme dysfunction man and disorder that we have to operate in man you know and it's supposed to be vexing man it's supposed to hurt it's supposed to you know sometimes you go through you know slight depression thinking about it damn you know you look at just circumstances you like damn you know and to the point that you just know man we gotta get out of here man <laughs> you see Remember reading the NLT, Psalms 119 and 71. It said, My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Okay? It, it taught me to pay attention to the decrees, man. The suffering was good for us, man. You know, as men and women, like, we going through things and decisions we made, and it's like, damn. You know, how far off, you know, we were, man. You see? Let's read verse 75. It says, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness has in faithfulness has afflicted me. Okay? And let's read this in the NLT. Psalms 119 and 75. I know, O Lord, that your regulations are fair. You disciplined me because I needed it. We was disciplined because we needed it. You see, we was put in these circumstances because we needed it, and it's working for our benefit now. Okay, and we're developing a mindset. This is us putting off the mortal, which is in the flesh, and putting on immortal, which is based in the spirit, which is based in order, which is based in righteousness, man. You know what the scriptures say. Um. Because the law was, 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 when you think about it, the law was created for immortality, man. You know, that's why it's based on every decision pro-life. Let's get that. Um, let's this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 6. And 
16 said, For the true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption, which is immortality. And that's why the new covenant and the laws are going to be within us. We're going to be incorruptible, man. Okay, the law was made for immortality. That's why it's that's why the law is going to be set up as the eternal standard in the earth. We're tapping into immortality as we come into this wisdom, as we come into this right way of being. <laughs> okay. Let's see. There's another one that said it even more plainly than that. I want to find it. I think the brother Bayan used to post it all the time. Yep, this is um. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 17. It says, Now when I considered these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. How to be allied to wisdom is immortality, man. Okay? And we see the departing from the true wisdom is what? Chaos, violence. Dysfunction, anxiety, stress, <laughs> okay, captivity, you see, let's go from now, so let's get this in the book of um, Baruch. Show you the law is set up for immortality, man. This is the, the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, uh, yeah. This is the book, book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endureth forever. And they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Okay, and we understand we can't keep the law perfectly, but now we have a thirst for it, man. And we do have a portion of it that we can keep, we do have a standard, you know, that we can keep, and we see the benefits of just having a portion, you know, of the law in effect within our, um, our day to day. Okay, we see the, 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 the upgrade that it brings, man, the peace that it brings, you see. And it said, verse 2, turn you, O Jacob, and take heed, take hold of it, and the, walk in the presence of the light thereof, their path, that thou mayest be illuminated. Okay? And when something is illuminated, it's lit up. Okay? So the way to exist in righteousness has been lit up. <laughs> okay? In the earth, man. All right? Let's go from there. Get this song thirty four and eight. All right, this is the book of Psalm, chapter thirty four, verse eight. It says, Oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, that Yahweh Bashim Shai is good. Okay? Blessed is a man that trusted in him. And see, we're tasting the Lord when we partake in righteousness, man. Because what the scripture say, eat of this roll. So as we digest these things, this word, and begin to execute this word, we're tasting this word and seeing, oh, this is good. This is the way. Men, you know, we should, now we're starting to appreciate, <clears throat> now we can appreciate a woman being in order, which they're not going to be perfectly in order on this side, but just the, 
the concept of being in order. Like as men, we appreciate it now, and women should appreciate the comfort of having you know a man as a guy. Okay, as a leader. You see. These things should start tasting good to us, man. The, the, the way we eat, the way we, you know, the, the way we live, the way we, you know, the way we move. This word should be tasting good to us, man. The peace that's within this word, man, within obedience, man. There's a peace that comes with obedience, okay, and discipline, man. You see? So let's get this. And I end it here. This is the book of Matthew. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. It says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Okay, which is the humble. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You see? And this captivity has created a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, man. This this society, you know? So now we're beginning to understand righteousness, man. And this, this is a constant learning. As we get experiences in the truth, as we, you know, discover particular things, particular wickedness of Esau, Eden, okay? <laughs> We're beginning to appreciate righteousness, man. So, there was a point, Lord will you, brothers, and you few sisters edified. Till next time, I say, Shalom. Kwan Yashallah, Baba, Baba, DTA, soon. Shalom.